Hi, welcome to part two of the sword shaping tutorial. Um, I guess I'll preface this with the uh, usual ones of always protect yourself, safety gear, caution when using power tools, all that jazz. Alright, so for the first steps, as always, you're going to measure. In this case, you'll see me measure three, four, five, six times before cutting once. Um, it's a really good sword blank that I'm working with, so it uh, makes the process a lot easier. I'm starting out by outlining in Sharpie the, uh, the sword blank. Once I'm happy with the overall shape of it, you'll see me fine tune the lines a few times, rough sketch a most that, and then I'll actually free the blade uh, this power tool. I use a vibratory cutter. Um, it's similar to how a doctor removes a cast from your leg. The blade isn't really that sharp. Uh, it can cut you, obviously it's a power tool, always be careful, but for this process it works pretty darn quick. So we'll get the blade freed out and then we'll actually begin to shape and carve a blade. The elapsed process you're seeing is about 20 hours worth of work uh, for this whole video. We're running at about 32 speed right now. So if it seems like I'm flying through this, um, it's because we're flying through this. Alright, you can see I had a little bit extra there at the end of the handle. Um, get that cleaned up and cleaned off, and wow, we actually have something that kind of looks like a sword at this point. Alright, this is my uh, belt sander. A fantastic piece for working with a uh, sword blank like this. Right now I'm removing all the extra material. I always like to... Uh, Sand to actually get down to the width that I need versus trying to cut the uh, cut the blade initially at the correct spot. I find that you end up getting walk and then you're going to ruin your sword blank. It's a pretty quick process. Doesn't take very long with the belt sander. Um, very uh, aggressive. I think I was using about a 80 grit belt on that one. Right now I'm fine tuning the uh, flare on the blade. It's kind of a unique blade in the fact that it has these uh, tabs right up near the hilt. Um, this took quite a bit of hand tuning um, between a couple different files and then just muscle and, and sandpaper. We'll get through it. Uh, it didn't take too long, but it was a little bit of a process. You'll see me constantly rechecking uh, the shape and the angle uh, to make sure that I have a uh, symmetry on both sides of the blade, which is absolutely key. The little device you see me using there is called a contour. Uh, it lets you actually press it down on one side of the object and it makes an exact copy of it. Um, there are versions such as I have which are just uh, red plastic uh, pins. They make some that are uh, a finer uh, contour. Um, I picked mine up at Harbor Freight, I think for about five bucks. Uh, infinitely usable uh, when it comes to uh, doing this sort of thing. You can use it to instantly replicate any curve or shape that you need. Um, and in this case, it was uh, truly invaluable. All right, we're going to start out. Once I'm happy with the actual shape of the blade, I'm going to start moving some of the imperfections from the surface. Uh, although we had a really good cast or a really good uh, starting blank, we uh, ended up with uh, a few imperfections of the blade. Uh, rough hand sanding here. As you can see, I still have to shape the tip of these blades. All right, I'm going to start with creating the template that I'm happy with. Just using simple cardstock happy with the shape. I'll draw it on here. Make sure I got it nice lined up. Absolute key. Measure twice, three times, then actually do your project. In this case, I'm about 15 hours into the process. Last thing I want to do is accidentally damage the blade. This is a pretty good side view of the way the belt sender works. It's uh, very aggressive, but it's also pretty delicate depending on how much pressure you apply to the actual sanding belt. Um, I'm sure some people out there are going to tell me I'm doing this all wrong. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's worked pretty darn well. So I think I knocked this one out in just under uh, 
you know, uh, about 10 minutes or so of, uh, of sanding. There were a few breaks in between that we've cut out of the video. So you can see I'm slowly removing the material. Now it's just a matter of fine tuning. Uh, it is actually a pretty precise amount of uh, control you have with this thing. Alright, at this point I'm just checking, checking the fit, using the template again, making sure I have a nice smooth transition on both sides. The uh, last thing you want is to be out around or to, uh, to not be a perfect, perfect tip on the blade. It's going to throw the whole thing off and it's amazing how good the human eye is at seeing imperfections of, uh, of symmetry. I think we're kind of trained from birth to see exactly how something should look. So in this case, I took a lot of extra care to uh, get the blade exactly symmetrical. Sometimes you need to go to distance and uh, walk away and come back to it and take a second look. Alright, now that we actually have this thing lined out, uh, I am using a laser level to project a nice straight line down the blade so that I can ensure I have uh, absolute accuracy when I set these bevel lines. I started out by marking the edge of the blade, I'm actually marking the center line uh, to know how wide the blade is because I'm going to bevel out uh, half the blade down to the middle and then bring the other side into it. So, um, this was all done with hand sanding. I probably could have used a belt sander or used a vibratory or uh, another power tool to actually do it. Um, I've had bad luck with that and just through my own experience um, I would rather spend the time and the muscle to actually hand shape this blade uh, to get exactly what I want out of it. Um, I've always over over sanded when I use a power tool which results in pretty much having to try and find a way to repair a blade and in this case I just wasn't uh, comfortable with that. Uh, total process time here uh, just shy of about uh, six to eight hours of, uh, of straight sanding. I worked through the night on this one to uh, try and get it knocked out. Once I'm happy with the actual contour of the blade I'm actually going to start working on the hilt. So here you can see I have both pieces already cast. Uh, these were created out of clay and I'm using a uh, two-part self-curing uh, synthetic plastic for the actual uh, hilt itself. Uh, very lightweight, very easy to shape and sand, but uh, uh, good and durable and strong once you're, uh, you're done with the project. So and I still have a little bit of fine-tuning on the, uh, the tabs at the top of the blade. This is a matter of getting those perfectly symmetric. Um, a lot tougher than I expected just because it's a uh, beveled edge going around a curve, flattening out to nothing. So it was a little bit of a unique challenge, hadn't done that sort of thing before. Uh, once again, this added about two more hours to the blade construction just in the sanding alone of these two pieces. Alright, you can see I'm doing another rough, rough shape on it and breaking out Bondo. Uh, if you haven't used automotive filler, um, then I recommend you start using it. This stuff is a miracle cure. It can fix, it can clean up. If you have problems with your sculpts, no problem. Bondo can help you out. All right, you can see I apply a smooth layer over the whole surface. Um, 24 hours later, uh, I come back and I actually can start to sand it once it's fully cured. Um, you could probably work with it sooner than that, but I was uh, in no hurry on this one. All right, so you're going to go through and you're going to sand your blade. You're going to actually remove most of the Bondo that you put on. Uh, you want to work with a very thin layer in the first place, but the whole point of Bondo is that it fills in low spots. So I'm going to sand the blank down until I get down back basically to the blank and the Bondo is filling in just the extremely low spots that are uh, uh, no longer uh, at the surface of the blade and I have a nice smooth clean surface. Always keep your workspace clean. Um, you notice I'm not wearing a mask. Um, one of the reasons is because I'm hand sanding. Um, the dust isn't kicked up nearly as bad as a power tool, so I tend to uh, default just to coveralls and uh, staying warm out in the garage while I'm working. I am using a vapor proof barrier when I'm working on this uh, uh, with Bondo. It is pretty, uh, pretty aggressive stuff, so you definitely want to make sure that you are staying safe when you're using it. Alright, once I'm comfortable with the blade shape and I'm pretty happy with it, uh, it's probably around, right around 90% to this point. 
uh, as far as shaping and contouring. Uh, there'll be a little bit of finishing work to make sure the blade is perfectly smooth. I may uh, have that one in the next video. Uh, we're uh, going to be wet sanding and that's just tedious and boring looking. Um, right now I'm contouring and shaping the, uh, the two hilt pieces. Uh, this took me a little bit of effort. Uh, the mold wasn't exactly perfect. It was just a rough shape by myself uh, out of clay that I cast. Um, so what I ended up having to do is uh, uh, basically now create these so that they will fit on the on the sword. Uh, there was no relief cuts. There was no um, uh, in the original sculpt anticipation for it going over the blade uh, because I wasn't aware of how thick the uh, the sword would actually be. So pretty tough to compensate for that. You'll see me measure. Uh, I'm picking, finding perfect center line on the uh, on the sword and on the hilt pieces. And then I'm turning to a Dremel to uh, actually clean out and set the channel for the uh, the center piece of steel that runs down the length of the sword blank. I'm just using a uh, simple grinding bit, nothing special on this. It uh, does a really good clean cut, which was uh, really important to me. Um, and then it's just a matter of constantly remove a little, check, remove a little, check again, remove a little bit more, check. You never want to... Uh, just go 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 until you think you're there uh, you're pretty much guaranteed to shoot way past the moon on that one you can see I'm getting pretty close to this point we're going to start clamping those down and then we have a sword all right as always keep your workspace clean a little bit of fine tuning on those um, at the end of this I'm almost uh, to the point where I'm going to glue those together and then I have a a sword and a hilt and now we're starting to talk finishing work. I still have to build a scabbard which will be in the next video. Uh, it's a pretty simple process and I'll walk you guys through that when I get finally get there. So it uh, shouldn't be all that difficult and I'll show you exactly how to create a uh, scabbard via a sandwich method. It's uh, not too difficult and looks pretty pretty cool when you're all done. So there you go. There's the second video in the series. We'll see how many of this takes.